Yellowstone National Park is one of the most visited national parks in America, receiving over 3.8 million people in 2020, a 5% increase from 2019. Beneath the beautiful landscape though is a massive chamber, and it's this chamber that's of particular interest. Geologists and researchers have long been conducting tests around the area, ensuring that any activity is thoroughly investigated. The United States Geological Survey has been very open about what would happen if the supervolcano erupted, saying the following. If another large caldera forming eruption were to occur at Yellowstone, its effects would be worldwide. Such a giant eruption would have regional effects such as falling ash, and short-term changes to global climate. Those parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho and Wyoming that are closest to Yellowstone would be affected by pyroclastic flows, while other places in the United States would be impacted by falling ash. The amount of ash would decrease with distance from the eruption site. Such eruptions usually form calderas, broad volcanic depressions created as the ground surface collapses, as a result of withdrawal from partially molten rock below. Fortunately, the chances of this sort of eruption at Yellowstone are exceedingly small in the next few thousand years. End quote. Although the United States Geological Survey says that an eruption is not due within the next few thousand years, they also admitted that you cannot predict when an eruption is going to happen, saying that you can't go by previous eruptions. The USGS said the following, Yellowstone has experienced three at 2.08, 1.3 and 0.6 million years ago. This comes out to an average of around 725,000 years between eruptions, but this is based on the average of just two numbers, which is meaningless. End quote. It's for this reason why some have kept a close eye on the data in order to see if there's been any changes. Even NASA has now got involved, and said that the concept of a super eruption from supervolcanoes needs to be re-evaluated. This comes after new research suggested that volcanic eruptions can still happen even without the presence of liquid magma. NASA said that supervolcano eruptions must be a high priority, and must be studied extensively, saying that they're more of a threat to human life than that of an asteroid or a comet. This is according to Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Professor Martin Danzig and a team from Oregon State University studied Lake Toba, which is a large body of water that sits on top of a supervolcano. Researchers studying the lake have said that it's the largest lake in Indonesia, and the largest volcanic lake in the world, and studying it has allowed them to learn a lot. For example, they revealed that the supervolcano below the lake erupted an estimated 69,000 to 77,000 years ago, noting that the explosion was so big that it created a climate-changing event felt around the world. This is due to the fact that the ejection of a large amount of volcanic ash causes a global darkness event, preventing the planet from sufficiently warming up, and causing a global ice age. This appears to have been the case a mere 100,000 years ago when the Toba eruption occurred, and nearly drove humanity to extinction. Prior to this event, there was an estimated 1 million human population. After the event took place, there were only 11,000 humans left, of which caused a massive bottleneck effect that allows us to see the time in which such an event took place. Additionally, this rapid death count occurred when the Toba super eruption caused a global blackout that lasted for more than 10 years. During this time, a massive ice age occurred, and an atmospheric cooling event that lasted for another 1,000 years. Professor Danzig said the following about the study. Supervolcano eruptions can impact global climate, to the point of tipping the Earth into a volcanic winter which is an abnormally cold period that may result in widespread famine and population disruption. The professor and their team said that supervolcano eruptions happens once every 17,000 years, but as previously mentioned, 
This cannot be used as an exact number, as two events that would have happened close to one another would have been counted as one. And also like the United States Geological Survey said, you can't go by previous eruptions. NASA have said that after looking at all their data, one of the best ways to stop or help with a supervolcano eruption would be to cool down the volcano itself, saying that this could be done via heat transfer, with the figures showing that if you could remove around 35% of the heat inside the supervolcano, then an eruption would no longer be a threat. When this was first being discussed, it was suggested that officials could build a giant aqueduct above Yellowstone, and simply increase the amount of water inside the Yellowstone system. However, Brian Wilcox of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory said this wasn't a very good idea. He said the following, People don't want their water spent that way. People are desperate for water all across the world, and so a major infrastructure project, where the only way the water is used is to cool down a supervolcano, would be very controversial. End quote. NASA then suggested drilling 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers down into the supervolcano and bringing down the pressure, noting that the water that would be used for this project could be used to generate electricity. NASA did say though that the project would cost over $3.46 billion, but said that it's one way that could possibly prevent a supervolcano eruption. Some people have voiced their concerns with this, and said that it's one thing to experiment inside a lab, but when you start messing with mother nature anything could go wrong, especially if it's never been done before. Many users echoed the same concerns, with one person saying the following, and what's their plan B if something goes wrong? I'm not saying that nothing should be done as I think it's important that we take this seriously, but what if a chain reaction goes off? What if we increase the chances of an eruption? Who's monitoring this? And whose fault is it if something goes wrong? Also testing it on Yellowstone, a supervolcano which is best known for being massive, and having the ability to wipe out pretty much the entire United States does seem like somewhat of a gamble. End quote. Mr. Wilcox did acknowledge this, saying the following, The most important thing with this is to do no harm. If you drill into the top of the magma chamber and try to call it from there, this would be very risky. This would make the cap over the magma chamber more brittle and prone to fracture. Yellowstone explodes roughly every 600,000 years, and it's around 600,000 years since it last exploded which should be cause for us to sit up and take notice." End quote. Some scientists have spoken out about this, and said that the amount of water you'd need in order to make a small dent would have to be around the size of one of the Great Lakes in America. For context, Lake Superior holds three quadrillion gallons of water. In recent years, it seems there hasn't just been humans that have struggled. Sadly, there's very few places left that haven't felt the effects of humans, and wildlife researchers have said that drastic changes need to happen in order to preserve our natural world. Humans are an extremely invasive species, and one of the ways we are directly affecting wildlife populations is by destroying habitats and overhunting. Ecosystems can be quite fragile, and although people are now starting to change their ways in order to help animals, there's still a lot that needs to be done. Residents in Russia have just reported that hundreds of ravens suddenly fell from the sky. These reports came out of the Novosibirsk region, with one resident saying that they counted the birds, and they got to 400 in just one area. This is just the latest report of mass bird doves that have been reported, and as of right now, scientists are struggling to come up with an answer for why this is happening in various countries. One local said that the birds were sitting in the trees, then as they flew out they all started to drop one by one. Experts close to the region have said they will be investigating the event, but said that the most likely answer for this is poisoning. 
Interestingly, this explanation was put forward by other scientists in different countries. This caused some to question whether this is what's really happening, with some asking whether every bird will drop out of the sky at the same time. In the last 12 months alone, there's been mass bird dives in Italy, England, Ireland, New York, Indonesia, India and now Russia, sparking concerns that something is happening to our world that's messing with these birds and is in turn causing them to fall out of the sky. Some who have observed these events have said it's as if these birds are getting hit by blunt force trauma, saying that whatever is causing this is taking the birds out immediately, and that it's as if the birds were perfectly fine before this happened. As mentioned, this isn't the only place where this strange event has been observed. Biologists working at the New Mexico State University in White Sands Missile Range collected and examined nearly 300 birds that had mysteriously passed away. The researchers stated that various species had passed away under mysterious circumstances, and many of these were put under unknown causes. Martha Desmond, who is a professor at the New Mexico State University Department of Fish, Wildlife and Conservation Ecology, said that the sheer amount of birds that had passed away was worrying. She went on to say the following, It's terribly frightening. We've never seen anything like this. We're losing probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of migratory birds. End quote. At first, researchers said that it may have been an isolated incident, but the more these birds were being discovered showed researchers that this might not have been the case, and that something worrying was happening. Local residents then came forward and said that the local wildlife had been behaving strangely, and that various birds were not active or flying like normal. At the time though, these residents didn't know that hundreds of thousands of birds were about to pass away for unknown reasons. As of right now, some of the affected birds include warblers, sparrows, swallows, blackbirds and flycatchers. Martha Desmond went on to say the following. A number of these species are already in trouble. They are already experiencing huge population declines, and then to have a traumatic event like this is devastating. End quote. Trisha Cutler, who is a wildlife biologist, said the following. People have been reporting that the birds look sleepy. They're really just lethargic. One thing we're not seeing is that our resident birds mix in with these dead birds. We have resident birds that live here. Some of them migrate and some of them don't. But we're not getting birds like roadrunners or quail or doves. End quote. Martha Desmond did say though that some of these birds must be healthy, as they have their migratory feathers, but said that something is happening after this process that is wiping the birds out, going on to say this isn't just a few birds, something massive is happening that's caused these birds to drop. Another thing that added confusion was that people suggested that it may have been the insects the birds were eating that caused them to drop, but the biologists noted that many of these birds were seed eaters, and suffered the same fate. As of right now, many of these birds are having tests carried out on them, and this is happening at the US Fish and Wildlife Service Forensics Laboratory in Ashland. The researchers there hope that further analysis will help them answer why so many birds suffered the same fate. Desmond said the following, Over 3 billion birds have died since 1970. Insect populations are crashing, and this is just an unprecedented mortality. Scientists did say that one explanation that could explain why this is happening is that of strong winds, although as you can imagine this wasn't met with open arms, and others said that something else was at play. Scientists and researchers have investigated this phenomena over the years, and different theories have been put forward. Various things can affect these birds, this ranges from electromagnetic currents, to things like poisons. As some have pointed out though, if these animals were poisoned, is it likely that they would all drop at once and in the same area? In these situations, all of the birds can be found very close to each other. Some have said it's as if these birds were zapped, and whatever passed through them caused them to pass away on the spot. People have been putting forward their own theories as to why this is happening, 
noting that radio towers and radio wave emissions could be messing with the bird's senses, saying that tests have been carried out and it's proven that this does directly affect these birds. So what do you make of this report from Russia? And why do you think that so many birds are falling out of the sky? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.